it has come to my attention that there do exist people in the world who want to know how to set up a Dash node. And if you're kind of going through the forums and whatnot, um, it's kind of hard to figure out how to do that. Now, if you're watching this, you probably already know why you'd want to set up a Dash node because you've got some reason that you want to do it. But um, one thing is if you want to use, if you want to have your own uh, Dash Insight API so that you can get faster response, time, response times than the community one, which I don't even know what their terms of use is in terms of just randomly using it. Um, get a lot faster response times on the API. Anything else that you want to build against the RPC or anything that needs the full blockchain for verification, um, that's, I, I guess, what you bought it for. Um, I'm working with this group Dash Hive. The reason that we needed to figure out how to do a full Dash node was exactly what I said before. Uh, we're integrating with the Dash Inside API and we needed to have um, good response times and, and know that we could run our own server. So uh, we came across, there, there's an article, I've got it referenced down here uh, on Medium, set up instant send transactions the comprehensive way. And the guy does a really good job of outlining everything. There's a, there's a few pieces that are out of date. There's a little bit of information that's maybe missing. And so I think that this is even, um, even a little bit more comprehensive. If you look at the, uh, the blog article, let me oops, go back here. So, so we've kind of got this, uh, we'll put this up on a blog at some point, but it goes through, tells you step by step what you need to do um, and, and kind of gives you the how and why. This I want to be a little bit quicker, even though I'm blabbing on, I want this to be a fairly quick run through. So there are four dependencies. They're a little bit difficult to set up. So this is why we created a script to do it. And I'm going to show you how to do it uh, using a VPS on DigitalOcean because um, it might be expensive. I don't necessarily recommend that you do that. But anyway, um, you can run it. I think that um, two gigs of RAM and, and 40 gigabytes or 50 gigabytes is probably good enough for most people because I'm doing this uh, screencast and this compile takes a long time. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, I'm only going to be running this for you know maybe 10 minutes or something. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose the most expensive one there that gives me the most CPU power so these compiles can done, get done quickly. Um, whenever you're using a VPS, I always recommend adding your SSH key. I've already added mine. And I'm going to give this one the name of dash, 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 and then the regular name. So I'll go ahead and create that. It's going to come back with an IP address. I'm going to SSH in. Um, sorry to bore you with some of the stuff that you probably, hopefully, already know how to do. But because I know there's beginners out there, uh, I, I wanted to take a, as much of a, quote, comprehensive approach as I could myself. Here we are, I've got the IP address. I'm just going to go into the terminal and um, see if I can get connected there. All right, here we are, I'm logged in. And whenever I'm in a remote server, just pro tip, uh, some people use Tmux, I like to use screen and um, screen-xrs and then you get to name the screen session you want to attach to. I always call mine awesome. What this will do is, uh, like, this process is going to take a while. Maybe your Wi-Fi gets shut down, you have to close your laptop, whatever. Um, it'll just allow you to resume if you, uh, if you, I'll show you just to, to show you. I won't explain it too much. So I'm going to hit enter, creates a new screen, whatever the heck that is. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and paste the clone here. And then uh, I'm just going to move into that directory that it just cloned to. And then I'm going to, I guess I didn't even need to copy that. I'm just going to run bash install. Now this is going to take a while. So I'm going to, I'm going to goof off a little bit while that's doing that. I'll, I'll teach you another little trick and I, I won't, I'll fast forward through most of this, but I'm going to hit, um, uh, enter uh, tilde period. And that, that force closes my SSH connection. So now I'm going to SSH back in and I'll show you what it means. So if I do screen dash LS, you can see that, um, my session is still running. It's called awesome and its process ID is 1804. So when I run the same command again, now it reattaches me just where I left off. Now I'm going to let this fast forward. Actually, before I let it fast forward too much, let me just tell you. Um, so Berkeley DB, LibSodium, ZeroMQ, all of those pretty much need to be custom installed because it needs to have the right version that matches up with Dash and then the Dash full node itself. So these are, these are four custom C compiled installs or C++ I think some of them are and the nice thing about our script that we created is it's all going to install into slash op slash dash pay so there's going to be a user dash 
It's going to be everything's going to be installed in Op Dash Pay. So if you need to like start from scratch, you know, you don't even have to delete or reformat your machine or, you know, because sometimes you, you get worried about like, where is all this stuff at? Like, how do I clean it out? How do I start over? So the way we did this, we, we figured out the, the dirty work of setting all the right variables and all the right options and all the right command line parameters for the compile so that everything fits nice and neatly into slash op slash dash pay and only system dependencies that normally install um, are installed by the system manager and then it uses systemd so it's automatically going to start on startup you don't have to worry about that this will work with normal distributions like um, ubuntu and other systems that use systemd which i think is most linux distributions these days um, the the key thing that's going to get installed when all this is done that you need to worry about is slash op slash dash pay slash bin slash dash and in there also is going to be dash cli and a couple of other utility programs that you might want to um, goof around with and then if like I said if you ever want to uninstall it that's all you've got to do there's only one file that's outside of op dash pay and that's the system D service file and then it would delete the the user and group that are created and you're gonna have some config files op dash pay etsy dash dot conf and then this one you I don't think you're really going to need to edit that but it's just good to know that it, it's there and you can edit if you decide to um, so you'll be able to use system D to restart the dash D daemon um, and journal control to look at the logs if you need to if anything's going wrong also feel free to open up an issue um, you know I you know, we, we've got work to do and everything so I'm not gonna like promise you a four-hour response time but uh, we'll keep an eye on it and try to make sure that if there's something wrong that's not working through distribution, we can we can take a peek. This is how you would manually start it. Oftentimes, when you have problems with with something like this, like if the logs are showing just a really vague error message like "quit," um, you can take a look at, at just running it manually as root and seeing if you get that same error. If not, then you know it's likely a, a, a problem with like the version of System D or something in the config file that's not. Uh, the, the system can start up config file that's not working for your system. Um, the one thing that you're probably going to want to change is maybe the IP addresses that you allow, which I'll put a section in there for that. I forgot about that. And then what your RPC user and RPC pass is if you're using the RPC. Um, so we'll do that once this is done installing. And then there's this troubleshooting section. Basically, I think I ran into every problem that you can possibly have. Um, and I tried to address them. So hopefully, you know, you'll get here with a Google search if you're just um, trying to figure this out for the first time and coming across some of these errors. Um, yeah, so I'll just go ahead and let this fast forward now and then I'll show you a couple of the um, config files and then there's a second video after this where we'll go into the Dash Insight API. So here this finished in real time, that was probably like somewhere between, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes-ish. I forgot that the script no longer has, um, I used to have an option to use multiple cores when they're available, but then I turned that off to have it work better on the Raspberry Pi. Um, anyway, also, I forgot to mention that even if this does have, a, it's not doesn't, I, I've run this script on systems that only have 512 megs of RAM. Um, it'll create a swap file automatically, just temporarily, and then disable it after it runs. So we really did try to capture all the edge cases so that um, if you're using one of the standard uh, kind of Debian based systems or I would imagine most other um, common Linux distributions, this is just going to work for you. Um, and let's see. So this thing is probably, uh, I'm not sure whether it's enabled or disabled. Let's just go ahead and I, I'm pretty sure it enables it. I, I'd have to double check in the script. but. Um, it, it it would have been running anyway, I think, because if we just if we just run the logger, yeah, we can see that it's running, and so it's downloading the blockchain right now. But that's probably going to take. I mean, it's it's. I think the dash blockchain is around 15 gigs or so. I don't quite remember, um, but I think it's over 10, maybe less than 15, and uh, I don't know. You know, maybe that'll take. Uh, several hours depending on your connection maybe only an hour or so or maybe even uh, maybe even less than that if you're on something like DigitalOcean where they've got a lot of bandwidth but any, in any case what I wanted you to be able to see here is that the thing installs and it works now I'll go ahead and change the config options so that 
um, I can just restart it and show that it restarts, I guess. So if I wanted to allow a specific IP address for the IPC, I would change whitelist. I think I might change the, I don't know if I have to change the ZMQ thing, I don't remember. I might have to change the ZMQ um, and then the RPC allow IP. So these could be changed to 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 if I want to allow anything and just trust the, the username and password protection. Obviously, I'd want to change the username and password. One of my favorite ways to generate a password um, oh wait, it's not installed here. I like to, I just like to run basically a, a random generator and uh, hex and then I'll just copy and paste it in a couple places I need it because normally I don't need it in that many places. Um, like for example, I'll just do it here. Like I'll use node crypto.randombytes, get 16 bytes, call two string on it, get hex, and then I just copy that right there. And then uh, I'd put that in here, and then that's my password. That's how I like to do these types of things. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to show before we go on to the next video where we add the Dash Insight API. And then there's going to be a part after that where we actually show um, the, uh, we've got a tool called, it's called Dash Drop. That's uh, uh, a web app where you can you can take money and split it out into multiple wallets or gather it from multiple wallets. So you can do things like um, uh, community events where you distribute out, say, paper wallets to 100 different people. So I think, yeah, I think that was everything. And then I'm just going to go ahead and uh, for for the sake of saving time next time, I think I'll just go ahead and see if I can uh, get this thing as a tarball. Oh, what did I do? There we go. Okay. So I think I'll go ahead and upload this. So if you want to skip that compile step, there'll be a way to do that. Yeah, and that's it. We, you, hopefully you've already stopped listening to me blabber and, and uh, move on to the next video. But if you are still here, just trying to watch me work my magics. I'm going to go ahead and download that uh, file I just created. Oh no, Python's not installed. Well, that's a first. Maybe I can try good old Netcat. Be surprised what you can do. What's the IP address of this thing again? Let's see if this doesn't work for me. I think it will. So there's just a really cheap way to uh, do a file transfer. A lot of HTTP tools, if you don't put any headers and you just start sending the file, they'll actually accept it still. Okay, so now I've got that over here. I'm just going to go ahead and double check that uh, it worked. Okay, great. Looks like it did. So I'll get that uploaded. Oh, and then one other thing that I'd like to show. So uh, I'm going to need to go back to the config file here and grab the user and password. And then in my own root directory, I need to... Oh, look, I already did it while you weren't looking. Um, okay, so I added the user and password in there, and then I can run a command like dash CLI help, and then uh, you can see a list of commands. Let's see if there's a good one. By the way, this won't even appear for a little bit. It'll give you an error and, let you, and, and tell you that the, it's still loading indexes and whatnot. Okay, yeah, so let's just do like a fun little command, uh, get governance info. And I don't even remember what all this puts out, but it's like a bunch of cool, crazy stuff. So, you know, you can see you're connected to the blockchain. And uh, hopefully you uh, find this useful. Um, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and a subscribe or, you know, all that shenanigans. Maybe a star on GitHub or whatever. And then uh, watch out for the, the next videos. I'll probably have them linked in the description or something. 